to rejoice in the liberty to proclaim the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we're doing today that God has uh, given us a land where we can live soberly, righteously, and godly, when we have turned away from that, just like God has prophesied to Nineveh, to Nahum, he says, I will cast abominable filth upon you and make you vile. I will make you a gazing stock, a spectacle. He will lift your skirts over your face and show the nations your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. What he said, and he did that when he, a hundred years after the preaching of Jonah, when he granted it about repentance, and then a hundred years later they went back into vile sin, unspeakable crimes against God, where he brought great destruction upon uh, the nation of Nineveh. And it was destroyed. So he says, when a land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness, I will stretch out my hand against it, cut off its supply of bread, and send famine upon it, cut off man and beast from it. And this is an abominable religious system of dead works that will damn your soul to burn in hellfire, which you profess not to believe in because Mr. Russell said there is no hell by his doctrine to twist the scripture, his own destruction, and he's burning in the lowest hell right now, and those who follow him will go there with him. Now repent and come out of there and come to the true and living God, who's alive forevermore. Come to Christ. Young ladies, you're in great danger today. You stay in there, you're on the path of destruction. You will perish. Repent before you perish. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. We see that we have fellowship with God. We walk in darkness. We lie and do not practice the truth. There's a way that seems right to you. It's end is the way of death. Jesus is the way you're going. You're not going his way. It's the wrong way. You're on the broad way that leads to destruction. Even though you may feel great, you feel like you're on the right way, you know where you're going physically. Some of you today are going where you're going to shops, you're going out of the beach, you're going, to, you're going to be walking to the pier. You know where everything is, and you're going to find out the destination you want to go to. You're not physically lost, but spiritually, every one of us is lost apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. We are born in this condition as a man was made upright, but he sought many devices. But man, yes, man is vile, abominable, and filthy. He drinks iniquity like water. And man does not go God's way. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on Jesus Christ the iniquity of all of his people. And he did the work required by God before the foundation of the world. He obtained eternal redemption for his people through the blood of his cross. The cross was a curse of God falling upon the Son of Man. Without measure, he bore the curses of disobedience. There are no more sacrifices for sins. There is no other way to be saved from God as holy judgment and indignation that will destroy a sinner eternally in hellfire. Jesus bore that on the cross for all who believe upon him. Have you come to Christ? Have you turned away from your abominations? Have you surrendered to his lordship in a godly repentance? If not, it is to do that. Come to Christ. Be reconciled to God. This is eternal life that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom he sent. The Lord Jesus Christ is the way to God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And do not be deceived, folks. God is not mocked. God will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. Friend, you're in great danger. What is manifest before you here today is darkness and light. God showing you truth and lies. God showing and exposing the spirit. Evil and good. Right here. Abominable filth, an open sepulchre, a vile blasphemous mouth that will be condemned. God will uproot the tongue out of the, out the face of the earth, destroy. If this man does not repent, if God doesn't grant him that, 
We don't hurt him. We don't wish him harm. We pray for those who persecute us. And Lord, we do pray that you either remove this wicked, foul spirit or remove him from among us or save him. We ask by your grace. And we thank God that he's opened this door so you can hear the word. Pay attention to what's going on here today in the spirit. You can have Christ. Jesus is a true God. He says, the Lord Jesus Christ is. Hey, don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. We return to the Lord and let mercy upon him. To our God, oh, reconciliate con Dios. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, glory to Dios. Arrepiento. Let me give you a little Spanish. That's what he says. Just come out a little Spanish. Oh, that's right. Keep, it, keep this work in prayer today. It's a great work today. Because the Word is going to have free course and be glorified. And God has brought everything subject unto the Word. In Jesus' conquering name. Praise His holy name. Let God be magnified. Let Him increase and we decrease by His grace here in Santa Monica today. What a blessed time, guys. So, we die because of sin. We are born in that. We die from it. If we die in it, we burn in the devil's hell. That's why you're a savior, and not only is to be saved from hell, but to know God now, to serve, love, worship, obey God now, because he's worthy of all your praise, honor, glory, strength, and power, because he's your maker, he's your creator. There's no other God but one. And this God demands perfection. The standard is perfection. And because he is holy, and we broke in his divine law, the Ten Commandments, and thought would indeed, our souls are damned. There had to be someone else who would come and die in the stead of the people that he came to save and bear their guilt to become their surety so that atonement would be made. In other words, there had to be a sacrifice. Someone had to die to pay the penalty of the wrath of God or everybody on its ever lived would die and burn forever in the consuming fire of God in hell because of sin. That's how high he is. That's his requirement. A loving God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God is not mocked. God demands your allegiance to him. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And so we put everything before God naturally. We serve other things and make them into gods. That is the greatest indictment of the human race. And in that condition, we are enemies of God. The Lord Jesus Christ did completely opposite. He lived for his God. He only served the Father. He only obeyed the Father every millisecond, every second he put on the earth all day long and thought word and deed so that he would be the qualified substitute to represent man to die for their sins. And then conquer sin, that God vindicate his son by raising him from the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead. He didn't stay in the grave. He's alive for anymore. He's on the throne. He is on the throne. God destroyed that wimpy little horn of his and mock him by his power. Thanks be to God for his indescribable grace. Again, God will make his mighty power known. So to manifest his glory here today. Bless his holy name. Think about the Lord today. You got no power and it's been given to you from above. Believe on him who justifies the ungodly. And your faith will be accounted for righteousness. The just shall live by faith. It is by grace that one is saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Folks, the proud in heart are an abomination to the Lord, the Bible says. That pride comes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. He says, all the pride of man will be humbled. The loftiness of men will be bowed down. The Lord alone will be exalted on that day. So humble yourself now. Under the mighty hand of God. You know you're fragile. You're frail. You're poor. You're needy. You're nothing but a breath that passes away and doesn't come again. You're but dust. And the body wants to dust. He formed me from the dust of the ground. He returned to the dust of the ground as a man or a woman. You need to have the eternal life of Christ in you till you be raised to everlasting glory. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not obey the Son of God shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. Turn to Christ, repent of your sins, give glory to God, flee from the wrath to come today. Do not harden your hearts, ladies and gentlemen. For the 
name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous under the same. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on the world, received him in glory. Fear God and give glory to him. You need to return to the Lord through Christ or you'll die in your sins and burn under the wrath of God. You're in great danger. Turn from your idols to God to serve the living and true God. Repent and believe in the gospel today. The kingdom of God is at hand. The Lord, that means, is close. His kingdom, will, he comes again to reign. He's coming again in flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. These will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You get renewed by the spirit of your mind. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind when God gives you the mind of Christ. Return to the Lord. In him we have redemption. Jesus paid the ransom of the souls of his people. It was atoning death on the cross. That redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. If you don't have the Son right now, you're not in the saving grace of God. You're not in the saving love of God. You're in a temporal common grace and benevolence like everybody else. As God is loving to all of his creatures, in his hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. But not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. This is in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent hearts. He says you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath ready to be revealed in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil for the Jew first and also for the Gentile, for there is no partiality with God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes. I am the Lord, that is my name, and I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images. There's no other God but the Holy One of Israel. No God besides Him. He alone made all things. Look at the creation, the creation, the creation's glory today as you sit upon the beach. As you look upon the glorious grandeur of the skies and the trees and everything around you, it's the creation of Almighty God of whom you have forsaken, of whom you have not worshipped. That's why you're in desperate need of repentance and restoration to God. It's a heinous thing to live apart from Him and do your own will, not His will. Jesus Christ, God the Son, is the only one who did the will of God. And in Him you can find eternal life and forever be restored to God, even if you lost everything else. He alone is God. And you cannot serve two masters. Either you will hate the one, and love the other, or else you would despise the one and be loyal to the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. If you love this present evil age, the world you live in, the love of the Father is not in you. The things of the world, temporal things. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some of it's pierced through many sorrows. They've strayed from the faith. It's pierced them through with many sorrows. They've gone after riches that make themselves wings like eagles and fly away towards heaven. It is pride that comes before destruction. Pride. Arrogance in the evil way. And all the pride of man will be humbled. The loftiness of men will be bowed down. The Lord alone is going to be exalted on that day. He says, you enter into the dust, hide in the coals of the earth from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth mightily. He said, I will shake the heavens and the earth will move out of a place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, folks. That's when he is, the wrath of God is being filled to be poured out upon the world. When Jesus returns, it'll be a day of vengeance and recompense and a day of destruction upon the ungodly. He says, I will execute vengeance in anger and fury 
upon the heathen such as you have not heard. And to be saved, come to Christ, you're in great danger apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no hope for you. You are destitute, you are lost. You are spiritually bankrupt. No matter how much money you have, you've got nothing at all but judgment impending upon you apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again. You must have his righteousness imputed to you by faith alone. Or you'll be eternally consumed in the fires of hell. Destruction. Man, it'll be unspeakable. Judgment. Incomprehensible. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart, folks. We turn to him. Have mercy upon him. To our God, and abundantly pardon. Yes, the pride. We worship oh. other things. We make ourselves into our own God and every other thing into another false god and let it rule over us or have dominion over us because we're made to worship something we are we're, we are creatures that are designed to worship god but because of the fall we worship other things it's going to be something person place or thing you're going to worship that is not god and it is so damning so this message is a message of reconciliation to the one true god to worship him in spirit and in truth because you can know him personally, experientially, intimately. To know him is eternal life. You don't know the Lord today if you're living a life of lawlessness. That means you're doing your own will, like you're God, as though God never gave a law. And you're in an anarchy against the lawgiver, making your own laws. You see, friends? In this condition, you're in enmity with God. It's a carnal mind. You're not really saved. You don't desire to please God with your life. You don't desire to do what he says. As he said, if you let me keep my commands. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Folks, repent. Turn to God and do works. Fit with repentance. The kingdom of God is near. Return to the living God. Jesus is Lord of all. Every knee will bow of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Oh, friend, you are dead in sins and trespasses. That means you've broken continually the laws of God. And you are under the curse of the law. Hey, praise the Lord. Come to Christ. How are you doing? Do you know the Lord? Yeah. Are you born again of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Praise as many as led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God. Have you failed? Examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Yeah, enjoy the word. Get some word out today. Enjoy the word. We praise the Lord. Bless his holy name. We really do hope you are. For the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And because of sin we are separated from God, we can never return to God. In Adam all die. By man came death, so also by man came the resurrection from the dead. Through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. So also through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Through one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also through one man's obedience, many were made righteous. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. That is the eternal Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who reigns forever. Return to him, have mercy upon you. Repent and believe in the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who lived perfectly, the only one who died as a substitute. One time, once and for all, it conquered Satan's sin in the grave. Through his cross, of whom he made, we came the sin of his people, satisfying the justice of God, that in Jesus Christ will be eternally restored, saved from sin and death, and in the kingdom of God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Don't harden your hearts today. Ladies and gentlemen, Today, if you hear his voice, come to Christ. Repent today and live. Seek the Lord and live. Jesus is your king. The Lord Jesus said, no one can come to me except my Father in heaven. Lord, to call him. And God does this by the Spirit of the living God. Ladies and gentlemen, this work is not something that you can perform on yourself. 
Even like the first time you came to this earth, you had no power to decide whether you become male or female. The first time you came here on earth, you had no power of decision as to whether you would be white or black or brown or yellow. The first time you came into this earth, Praise the Lord. you had no decision of power as to when you would be born. And as it is in the first place, so I want to tell you, you have no power. You cannot perform the second birth on your own. It is the work that originates with God himself. Now to the very nature of this change. It is the implanting of a principle and a disposition into the heart of one who was formerly dead to God. Dead in trespass. Dead in sin. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Yeah. Until God revives you and regenerates you, ladies and gentlemen, not only are you born in sin, not only are you enslaved to sin, but you're also enslaved to the Glory soul. To and ladies and gentlemen, no amount of morality is able he to save you. Him. Ladies and gentlemen, that God is a holy God. And as it declared in the book of Job, how then shall man be justified before God? How can he who is born of a woman made clean? And the Lord Jesus answers this question by saying, Except the man be born again, born from above, born of God, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this glorious work of regeneration God, the Spirit of God works in the heart, renews the soul, and it infects the entire person. And ladies and gentlemen, this glorious act of regeneration causes a And so radical is this change that the Bible declares the one that is affected by it is called the new creature. That's right! Praise the Lord! Glory to His name! As you come to Christ, you'll save the wrath to come. Have you been born again? I'm not asking whether you go to church. You can be religious, but still be spiritually dead. And was Nicodemus. Jesus said to Nicodemus, this doesn't a man seem like something that's going to make Jew. the people around him feel like what he's saying. Only God can raise the dead. He's all he's doing is yelling. But ladies and gentlemen, he's disturbing everybody in the wrath to come before he's true. You can study about philosophy or religion, but that will profit you nothing, ladies and gentlemen, except you be born of God, except you be born of his spirit. You have no life in you. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, have you been born again? He's, he's really around that book. He's about the spirit of the living God. He's hoping it's a talisman. The new birth he really wants is not the change of a name, but it is the renewal of nature. The new birth is not turning a new leaf, but it is a spiritual rebirth. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say, in heaven is where we all get the man tortured by the bullies in there, you know, in our hell. The love of the Spirit. He the love of God would not burn God. anyone in hell. Oh, when he speaks of the water, he's not talking about baptismal water. Totally insane. A lot of people say, I was, I was baptized as an infant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, until the spirit of the living God regenerates you, you can go through the rituals of religion. You can be baptized in water. You can go down as a dry sinner, go down as a wet sinner, and you've still not been born again. Oh, the new birth, where God himself declares in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and I will cleanse you of your filthiness, and I will cleanse you of your idols. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the work of regeneration is the work of rebellion. It's all about the name of the sin. Not only you born in sin, but you are bound and enslaved to sin. The ghost of Christ has you away. It's not a problem of intellect, but it is a spiritual matter. I know. The Lord Jesus.
said in John 3, 19, this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light. That's right. You see, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going if to you do don't use your free speech, for sin on your own. You can't. You're bound in sin. And not only are you bound in sin, but you love sin. You don't want to give up your sins. You don't want to give up the pornography. You don't want to give up the drunkenness. You don't want to give up the fornications. You don't want to give up the homosexuality. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, sin may feel good for the moment. Sin may be popular for the moment. But the end is still damnation. For the moment of the time, the soul of the sin will die. In this glorious act of redemption, oh ladies and gentlemen, whereby God sent his one and only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, to suffer and die on the cross for the sins of his people. You see, ladies and gentlemen, outside of the mediator, Outside of the finished work of the mediator, who, when he hung upon the cross, paid the full satisfaction and the payment for sin, the Bible declares that the soul that sins would die. You and I, ladies and gentlemen, you and I, ladies and gentlemen, are under a divine curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs upon the tree. And God redeemed us from this curse. Okay. Guys, you gotta get right with God. You're the way to help. Your sin was pacified. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for doing the God's work. Dealing with the issue of sin. Pleasure to come to Christ to be reconciled to God. I can't believe in the Lord Jesus. The very nature of God being holy. It's all about holiness. Guys, be reconciled to come to Jesus to be saved in the sin of sin. Come to Jesus to be reconciled. The wrath of God is simply the holiness of God. Always to sin. Bullies, Christians, the bully religion, the Christians, the bully religion, 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 the it's going to read in a theological content. You believe in Jesus, you forgive yourself. Jesus Christ suffered the wrath of God for the sins of his people. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there upon Calvary, when the Lord Jesus Christ suffered to die, there on Calvary is a reminder of the holiness of God. There on Calvary was a reminder the wages of sin is still death. There on Calvary is a reminder of the total depravity of mankind. There on Calvary is a reminder that you cannot see yourself. There on Calvary is a reminder that the wages of sin is death. But there on Calvary was the mercy of God. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you see, at Calvary's cross, God dealt to the issue. You have to be called a men rabbi, rabbi. But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall eminent himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
when you come to sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him a twofold more the child of hell than yourself than themselves. You make him a twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. With all these false prophets, false teachers of the day that are doing now. One of you, you blind guide, who say, Whosoever shall enter by the temple is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he's a debtor. He fools him blind, whether it's greater the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind. For whether it's greater the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift. Oh, what a call. Yes. See, he's rebuking these false teachers, scribes, and Pharisees. We're adding to the work of Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ sanctifies the believer. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they earn war anymore. O oh, house of Jacob, come in us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken my people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. The land is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean men bow down, and the great men humble themselves, therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock. Hide thee in the dust for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. The Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everyone that is proud and lofty. And upon everyone that is lifted up, he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up. And upon all the oaks of Bashan. And upon all the high mountains. And upon all the hills that are lifted up. And upon every high tower. And upon every fence wall. And upon all the ships of Tarshish. And upon all the pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of men shall be bowed down. And the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and all the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes of the earth, and the rocks, and the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. When he arises and shake terribly the earth, he said, I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move out of the place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts. Flee from the wrath to come. You must enter by the door, Jesus Christ. Enter by Him, and you no longer come into judgment. You're passing death to life. You become a child of God. You become a friend of God. You enter into the everlasting love of God in Christ Jesus. This is a picture given to Isaiah that happened in this day when God brought judgment upon the nation, but it will happen again in the latter times at the return of the Son of Man. They will cry for the rocks to fall upon them to hide themselves from the wrath of the Lamb and from him who sits upon the throne in that day. It'll be destruction from the Almighty. And even now you feel comfortable you're kind. We God is kind and unthankful and evil. He's making the sun rise on the evil and the good, sending rain on the just and the unjust. But the day of the Lord is coming, he says, and burning like an oven with all the proud. Yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble when the day of the Lord comes to burn them up. That could be the moment you die in your sins before the return of Christ. But you know not the day or the hour God is going to require your soul. Are you right with God? Have you been born again? Are you in Christ? Or do you play church on Sunday? Do you think you're saved because you made a profession one time in your life? Examine yourselves as to whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves? If Jesus Christ is indeed in you, accept him, you reprobate. Look into the perfect law of liberty, the engrafted word that is able to save your souls. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. But your laugh to be turned to mourning and your joy to glory. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. 
Oh, the Lord is the true God. He's the living God and the everlasting King. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall rest upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. But there is no peace for the wicked, declares the Lord. For the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. For there is no peace for the wicked. Friend, if you don't have Christ, you may have a false peace right now because you have a temporal comfort and security and you're comfortable, you're happy, you're healthy, you're wealthy, many of you. But friend, you die in the body. You'll be everlasting conscious torment in the lake of fire burning with the devil and his angels for the Lord God destroys the wicked. He preserves those who love him. Come into the love of God today. Repent and believe in the gospel. Flee from the wrath to come, return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon you, to our God, and he will abundantly pardon. Oh, praise you. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, do you not mourn over your sins? Do you not tremble before the presence of God? Are you not concerned about your eternity? Does not your soul and the place where your soul is heading towards you, does it not cause you concern? But it's a sign that God has given you over to damnation. It is a sign of your perdition. Oh yeah, you keep mocking God. Go ahead. Keep mocking God. Jesus said every careless word that comes out of your mouth, you will give an account on Judgment Day. You'll have no excuse. No excuse on Judgment Day. It'll be better for you on that day to have never been born. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa to you who hear the gospel and turn your back against a holy God. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa to you. So you escape the damnation of hell if you continue in your wicked ways. How will you escape the damnation of hell if you continue in your rebellion? How shall you escape the damnation of hell as you continue in your pornography, lust, and your lewdness? How shall you escape the damnation of hell in your indifference to the message of the gospel of grace? There will be no escape. There will be no escape. But a certain looking forward to a fire indignation that will consume the adversaries. He who despised Moses' law, died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How shall you escape if you turn your back against the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant as something that is unclean and have done despite to the Spirit of grace? For he says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And in due time, your foot will slip. You laugh and mock at it now. You laugh and mock now. And on Judgment Day, you're going to stand before a holy God. You're going to wish you were never born. Jesus said that he killed his work. Tell us word that comes out of your mouth, you will give an account on judgment day. The Bible declares, and I saw his great white throne, and him who sat upon it, from his face, the earth and the heavens fell away. Only fools mock at sin. Only fools mock at sin. Brothers and sisters of the Lord, God bless you. I just want to do an overview of the outreach in Santa Monica. It was a remarkable work of grace. God went before us in power as usual. Uh, the word went out uh, unhindered and had free course. We're very thankful for that. 
what we want to go over today is basically the training and equipping of saints, how to handle hecklers, how to handle mockers, uh, especially with megaphones. You know, a lot of them are getting stronger. These principalities in certain regions are very, very, especially in consistent bases like Santa Monica, Pier, Promenade. It's great work. Uh, in Seattle, we're seeing more. They're able to linger more and have perverse signs, uh, use megaphones, and a lot of different resources the devil's given them and strength to be there for a few hours, you know, and motivated by not the spirit of the Holy God, of our God, but the spirit of Satan, spirit of Antichrist. And I've seen this increase, and I want to encourage you, those of you that are involved in, in any street preaching ministry or evangelistic ministry, to not get involved or let them become a distraction. May God train your hands for war and your fingers for battle. And it's part of that sanctification, because oftentimes we make a lot of mistakes of getting too involved when the word just needs to continue to go forth. Our job is to preach the word and exalt Christ, and God will use, God is sovereign over these people that he is using there. He's allowed to be there. They're used by the devil to draw attention to the preaching. They're there to, you know, they can be a distraction for us preaching, but the Lord will give you the ability to tune that out. It's not a work that you can do in the flesh. That is for certain. But be encouraged as you watch watch through the footage here. We were out there about four hours, and we condenses these videos down to about usually about an hour max or so. So much content. Um, but that man was out there about three hours before his horn died. He just recently got a megaphone about three weeks ago. So keep this work in prayer. Brother Tatsuo is out there, and the brethren there that are in the LA region uh, to consistently work that. I love that work. Um, but he's been getting more aggressive lately. So you see the man with the megaphone saying the most obscene, foul things that you could possibly say. And the Lord uh, give us the grace to overcome that by preaching the word. And many believers were encouraged. I had many conversations through that. Uh, God opened many doors. So uh, just watch through this if you can and see how that works. And we just stay, by, by God's grace, steadfast. Lord bless you. Thank you for the prayers. And uh, yeah, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might.